Hey everybody, this is Sally Alada, and I'm excited to give you a short overview here of the Enterprise Business Agility model. So let me start by why did we create this model, those seven pillars that you see over here? The main objective that we had was really to help leaders and executives see in one picture everything that is involved in leading an enterprise business agility transformation and gain the guidance from other companies that have done this before, what patterns have been successful for them so that we're not reinventing the wheel. What we found in a lot of organizations that we work with today is that multiple of these areas are all happening at the same time. There is an investment in the CX movement and lean product development. There is an area in the organization working on lean portfolio management. There is the agile movement happening from the bottom up within technology. Leadership and culture might be starting. Technology and DevOps uh, transformations underway. But how do we pull all these elements together so that we have a true end-to-end -end enterprise business agility transformation that is not only focused on IT, but goes to the enterprise level, pulls in our business partners, sales, marketing, finance, changing the way that we fund, the way that we do portfolio planning. What does that actually look like to make a real impact and dent in how our business is ran? So let me walk you through the model quickly. The pillars, there are seven pillars of enterprise business agility. The first one is customer seat at the table. This is the investment area where we need to, on the business side, learn who are our customers? What are their personas? What are their journey maps? Um, when do they interact with us? What do they really need? What problem are we trying to solve for them? Go through this discovery process and validate our assumptions. We found that many, much of the work that comes in right now and the ideas have actually not been validated. They're coming from senior leaders or internal ideas, but we really have no proof or metrics that these are the right experiments for us to run and that they are really going to deliver value or outcomes. Customer focus and engagement. So are we engaging with our customers at the right time and at the right level? And does the entire organization move from being a product technology or solution organization into more of a customer focused organization? So this is a very important investment area, which really ensures that we're building the right product or service for the right person. Lean portfolio management is our investment in changing how we plan and how we align the work. Every company that we're in right now uh, obviously suffers from a lot of demand, very little capacity, but the problem that we see is everything, all of the alignment that's happening today is around output. It's all project-based, it's all deliverables, features, and stories, but if you actually ask the business and the, tech, and, the, and the senior leaders if they're achieving outcomes and actual results, they would say probably not. So lean portfolio management is really about providing clarity on the strategic intent and the three-year vision of where we're headed with measures for success breaking those down into one-year themes, and then breaking the one-year themes down in our, from our strategy to quarterly outcomes. Making sure that every quarter, not just once a year, we are realigning all of the teams, the programs, the products, and the portfolios around outcomes. Again, outcomes are different from the work, uh, and we do advocate using the OKR method, the objectives, and the key results. Changing our funding model, moving away from uh, funding projects into really funding these value streams that we're designing um, and, and buying capacity instead of just buying projects and work. The org structure and design is really the, the work that's involved in moving from the current structure that you might have into a logical new structure where teams are aligned by value stream. So again, we're not talking about a physical reorg, even though you might decide to do that in the future, we are talking about um, instead of looking at who reports to who, what we want to see is who are the teams, who are the programs uh, or the products, which portfolio should exist, and how do we align everything around the right value stream for our organization. By doing that, we're going to impact a lot of roles, so we should have a plan for role agility. And in addition to all of this, we need to have a design for our enablement teams. Those are the teams that help grow the talent and the skills within the existing teams and help them do what they do better um, and bring standards and best practices so that we don't just have cross-functional teams, but we also have areas of discipline such as DevOps or CX or Agile that can enable and grow um, the rest of the teams. 
The Agile framework and mindset, this is the pillar where we see the most investment and most organizations have had Agile move from the bottom up and specifically around Agile for technology teams. So this is where Scrum and Kanban has been applied. Um, also the scaling movement into bringing you know, cross team planning. This is definitely an area of focus right now where companies are learning how to scale planning across multiple teams. Agile for Business is Missing, this capability, which is really bringing the agile mindset and the practices to the business side, marketing, HR, um, finance, audit, business operations. This is a gap that we see in this area. Leadership and culture is really the journey that is required to take your managers, directors, and executives, yes, I said executives as well, on this leadership agility journey. And this leadership journey journey is not going to be just a one workshop or an event. This is really potentially multi-steps of learning how to lead this new way of working. Special focus here for the managers. The role of managers has really shifted tremendously and has been disrupted. So special attention and a roadmap for what will managers be doing in the future? How do they become more strategic and less tactical? remove obstacles for the teams, help mentor and grow others, um, and shift uh, shift up in the organization uh, and not have to manage the day-to-day -day work. The culture of agility is also extremely important, um, which is why it's under leadership and culture, which is the culture of innovation, inspecting and adapting, learning, not being being afraid of failure, highly um, high collaboration, culture of feedback, uh, culture of uh, open and honest dialogue. So all of these are all part of the new way of working. Making it stick pillar is really around sustaining the change. So building internal change agents for business agility, um, having continuous measurement and growth and beginning to measure every quarter, where are we today? Where do we want to improve and how do we develop a clear action plan for that? And then this is the agile talent development and agile talent management. There's a lot of disruption that's happening for the HR um, area right now. And there's a lot of new expectations of what HR should do to help us recruit, hire, change our onboarding processes, make sure that we're rewarding people differently, changing the performance management approach, uh, realizing there's new roles, um, and um, lots of changes happening in this area. Last but not least is technology agility. So whether it's our vision or architecture, technical excellence, or the DevOps and continuous delivery movement, this is really the foundation of everything. Um, we can do everything that we want to do on the top very well, but we're not going to be able to deliver any value to production if our technology um, has not achieved agility. And then finally, what's important in this model is how do we measure success? So let's assume that you've invested in all these areas above what are the three metrics that will really tell you if you've achieved enterprise business agility? And those are flow, value, and quality. Lots more to talk about, but hopefully this gives you a quick overview of the enterprise business agility model. Thanks for watching.